Nemane Padre, se fede i Espiritu Sancti. Amen. We have a counterpart today, of sorts, uh, to the Feast of All Saints. And so today is the um, Feast of All Holy Relics. And this is uh, not in the universal calendar, um, but it is a feast or an observation that is celebrated or what has been celebrated uh, many different times in many different places. Uh, relics is those things, uh, the, the bodies of the saints, the, the bodies of the martyrs, uh, to which God has given, uh, we could say, uh, proof by miracles that they ought to be venerated. And so uh, this, this, this feast, um, we'll talk about the feast um, more later, but specifically, uh, it's always been right a, a custom of the church uh, to honor the earthly remains of those, those men and women, those saintly men and women who lived their life on earth as if they were always in heaven, right, or already in heaven. And this is an interesting, um, I would say, uh, phenomena peculiar to uh, the New Testament, um, I would say, church, as opposed to the Old Testament church, the Jews. Uh, it's pointed out that in the Old Testament, if you touched the body of those who were deceased, you were unclean, right? It was prohibited by Mosaic law. You don't touch a dead person. Uh, but in the New Testament, right, if you touch uh, uh, the relics of, of uh, uh, um, the body, you're healed, you're cleansed, you're filled with the power of God. And we get this from uh, uh, the scriptures, right? In the, in the New Testament, um, uh, of sorts, where we have our, our Lord's, the hem of his garment being touched, and then the uh, handkerchiefs placed in the body of Paul were brought to others and they were healed, and the shadow of St. Peter falling over people and they were healed. So we already see uh, that dur during uh, the life of the saints on earth, just their items were, uh, had power. The things they touched had power, and so how much more so after death would we see that uh, their mortal remains, uh, God would uh, give that same kind of power. Uh, and so this we see, right, from the ancient custom. The, the early martyrs of the church, uh, people would go to their tombs. They would venerate the, the, the relics of the martyrs. They, they would gather their blood. They would gather the sand, you know, in the arena where they were martyred. Uh, and we see uh, that there were healings, right? That, that's how the, um, we would say the cult, the veneration of the saints began. People would go to their tomb and they would be cured of leprosy, they would be cured of blindness, they would have demons driven out of them. We read that about the martyrs uh, uh, consistently in the early church. And so that is, that is where I would say that the veneration of relics uh, uh, got its beginning. And so it was by the um, seventh century in the church, it was um, so widely recognized that it was decreed if, if you could not construct an altar that didn't have a relic inside of it. Right, and, that, and that came from celebrating Mass over the tombs, uh, the bodies of the martyrs. Uh, but this, you know, of course, our little God knows uh, everything is going to happen. He knew that he wanted to give this, this power to the, the deceased of the saints, which is why in the Old Testament we have in the book of Four Kings, chapter 13, uh, when some, some were burying the body of a dead man, and they, were, they saw some raiders coming, they threw the dead man in the tomb of Elisha, which when he touched the bones, the dead man came back to life. Right, so we see even in the Old Testament, there is a reference to the power of uh, relics. Um, you know, now, now St. Thomas Aquinas says it's natural to venerate and remember those we love and to cherish the things passed on by them, the books, the clothing, the pictures, and so on. Uh, but if we, like I said, if we honor the body, um, things the person owned, uh, how much more so the body themselves, right? Which we could say they owned, right? They inhabited in this life. Um, and, and this was explained, right? This idea of why relics of the saints ought to be venerated was explained very well by St. John Damascene in the 8th century. He's called the last of the church fathers, a doctor of the church. And he says it's a, a treatise on the Orthodox faith, is what he calls it. And he says, Christ the Lord granted us the relics of the saints as founts of salvation, from which very many benefits come to us. In the old law, Whoever touched a dead person was deemed unclean, but the saints are not to be reckoned among the dead. For he who is life itself and the author of life was once reckoned among the dead, but he is risen. Thus we do not call those dead who have fallen asleep in Christ and who likewise hope for the resurrection. And so it is. It is because of the fact that uh, unlike the Old Testament Jews, right, when they died, uh, they went to uh, Sheol, Hades. Uh, they went to the limbo, 
right? There was no going to heaven for the Old Testament Jews, yet they all knew they had to wait. It was a, it was a, it was a period of, of expectant waiting for, this, for the Redeemer. But now that the Redeemer has come, we look forward to the resurrection, right? There is that hope, there is that promise, uh, that there is that newness of life. And so that is, uh, we would say, the, the theological distinction between Old and New Testaments in terms of venerating the relics, right? Venerating the, the, the remains of the saints left behind. Uh, and you know, this, this is, the tradition uh, bears witness to this in, in the terms of pilgrimages. Right? Why do people go to Compostello? Right? They travel thousands of miles to visit the bones of St. James. Right? Why do people go to Jerusalem? Because the whole city is a relic. That's where our Lord lived and, and breathed and was and, and, and so on. Uh, our, our Chart, Our Lady. Why do people go to Chart? Because of the veil. Right? The veil of Our Lady is there. And so on. The people consistently make pilgrimage and travel long distances to go venerate the remains of a holy person. Right? And even those who attack the veneration of relics, as I mentioned a few days ago, the Protestants, they themselves travel to Wittenberg to see the, the cathedral doors where Martin Luther nailed his 95 you know, theses on, 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 the, on the door. They themselves. Right? Um, so it, it's, 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 it's a natural thing to want to do that, right? to venerate that. And uh, this particular day for the feast, right? November 5th, it's been celebrated on different days all over the church, and so Rome didn't actually fix a day in the universal calendar uh, other than, than November 5th, right? The, the Rome said, this is what we'll do, how we will do it, but it is, um, we would say, uh, uh, optional. Uh, because in so many places, they would celebrate the veneration of all the relics on uh, the day they would bring, like they would, the, um, a church named after a saint. They would bring that, that saint's relics along with all their other relics, and all of them would be venerated on that day. Or there was one church where there was a translation of the relics to the, to the church or to the cathedral, and so that was a day when they brought out all the relics and added this one to it, that they, they would do that veneration. So that's why this feast day is not fixed in the universal calendar, because it's, it's expected to be celebrated all over. Uh, however, since the... Um, <laughs> And, you know, kind of like the church's own uh, um, turning aside or turning away from her own past, right? Uh, the relics are not venerated like they used to be. Uh, and I've seen, right? It's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful, these reliquaries from 100 years ago. And, and they're huge. They're like entire cabinets full of relics. And you open up the doors and these little bitty relics, are, they're covered with them. They have a thousand saints in, 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 in this, in this uh, reliquary, this cabinet. They're just absolutely gorgeous. If you want to find them today, you're going to have to go to a basement, you know, you have to go to somebody's private house uh, or, or to some, you know, traditional uh, church somewhere. Uh, but it's a very sad thing that we've gotten away from that, from the veneration of, of the, uh, the relics. Um, it, it, there was the accusation, you know, in, in, in uh, the 1900s or the, you know, um, that... Uh, uh, this is a practice of superstition, and we needed to we needed to get away from that. And the, the pious legends of the saints are nothing more than legends, and who knows, you know, what this this might be a relic of. And so there's a suspicion cast upon these relics, and that is not uh, the, I, the attitude we should have. Like one of the accusations is, uh, well, if relics are true, why are there three heads of Saint John the Baptist? Right? The Byzantine Church has one, and Rome has one, and some other one has one. And I mentioned this on the Feast of John the Baptist, the beheading, that all those different places have a part of John the Baptist's skull, and they reconstructed the whole thing around part of his relic. That's why there are three skulls of St. John the Baptist. Uh, the ac other accusation is if you gathered all the splinters of the true cross and gathered them together, you could build a cathedral. Um, right? That's baloney. They did a study in 1870 of all the churches and all the places that had a relic and its splinters, right? Splinters of relics. And, and they calculated the, the weight of these splinters, and they found that they all together in the whole world, uh, all the relics of the true cross weighed less than four pounds, right? That is pretty uh, convincing, right? So, so these, these, these impious accusations of, of Catholics, right, even against these relics, uh, they, they don't have uh, much merit. Now, it is true that there were abuses uh, of relics and that they would be bought and sold, you know, similar to indulgences. Uh, but this was, a, this was addressed at the Council of Trent, right? And they said, they insisted uh, in their, in their um, uh, decrees that in the invocation of saints, in the veneration of relics, and the sacred use of images, every superstition should be removed and all filthy lucre abolished. 
And I remember hearing, um, oh, I, I've searched for it, I can't find it. It was a, some TV show on uh, 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 pawn shops. And somebody brought in an item to the pawn shop, he wanted to sell it. And he said, I don't know what this is, I found it in my grandmother's attic. And it was a relic. Like, you, you, you know, if you're a Catholic, you know what it is, it's a relic. And he said, and, and there's this piece of paper that came with it, but it's in a foreign language, I don't know what it says. Well, it was Latin. So they gave it to, uh, the pawn shop had a, 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 a foreign language uh, reader. So this, this guy takes the piece of paper, and so you have the guy trying to sell this, he doesn't know what. You have the pawn store owner, and you have this, this language expert. And so on this TV show, the language expert says, uh, by decree of Holy Mother of the Church, be ye uh, all ye know that whoever dares to sell this holy relic shall be condemned to hell for all eternity. <laughs> and so the pawn shop owner said, I'm not Catholic, but I'm not buying that. <laughs> So, the, 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 and that's been since trend, right? So the, these things do work, right? They actually work. Uh, and, and that's the thing. These pagans, the, these non-Catholics, they believed it. Because even they recognize there is power in relics, right? There's power in sacred objects, in, in, in the remains of people. Even non-Catholics know that, right? Non-Christians know and believe that. Right? It was placed in the human person to understand and to realize that. That's why even in the very beginning, right, in Genesis, you have uh, you know, Isaac, Jacob, you're asking their sons, gather my bones and bury them in the special place, right? bury them in the land where I was. And they respect that, right? The sons respect the, the, the remains of their father. Uh, and in fact, was it um, uh, Rachel, um, Isaac, uh, or Jacob, had Leah and Rachel, uh, both of his wives were buried next to him. Right, uh, uh, because it was recognized that there is that respect and veneration due to everyone, right? Father, mother, and so on. And so we need to have that, right? We need to bring back that respect for those who have come before us. It is part of piety that we respect uh, uh, um, um, our fathers in the faith, right? The, 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 those who, who passed it on to us. You know, none of us would be Catholic if we didn't have those Catholics 100, 500 years ago, right? Who taught their children and who taught their children and, and who had their children baptized and catechized, right? We owe it to them. And so there's, a, there's an excellent summary. This was uh, written by a French priest in the 19th century, um, Abbe uh, Jaud. That's probably not how you say it in French. But he, he wrote very well on, on the on veneration of holy relics, and I, I will close with that. It's, it's very well written. Uh, the final object of the cult of the holy relics is God who sanctifies the saints. It is Jesus Christ of whose mystical body the saints are members. To indicate to us his divine approval of their veneration, God himself sometimes glorifies relics by heavenly perfumes, countless miracles, or other marvelous privileges. The veneration of holy relics thus has its foundation in the resurrection awaiting the bodies of the saints, which God himself will reassemble at the end of the world, giving their, those bodies all the brilliance and beauty of which they are capable. Let us then venerate with respect, devotion, and confidence these precious relics which once were animated by great souls, and who were the instruments of beautiful and holy works and of astonishing virtues, and which will someday be honored by a brilliant and immortal glory. Let us value pilgrimages made to the tombs of the saints and celebrate religiously the Feast of the Holy Relics, which uh, pro appropriately follows closely upon All Saints' Day, the feast day of the splendid holy souls who are in heaven. Amen, amen, I say unto thee, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he also shall do, and greater even than these. And God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.